Hi everybody, welcome to the Matt Western 365 YouTube channel and another entry in the Flow Byte series, a number of bite-sized videos that are designed to help you with your day-to-day -day flow problems. In today's session, what we're going to be answering is the question, does it exist? I'm not talking about UFOs, I'm not talking about ghosts, I'm talking about data. So one of the most common scenarios that we see in the Microsoft Flow community is usually around people wanting to check whether something exists before they actually go and create something. That could be before they go and create a file or it could be before they go and create a list item. Whatever it is, the same process still applies and it follows the same basic logic. That if the data does not exist, and I'm gonna use a list in, in this case, then I'm gonna go and create a new item. If it does exist, then I'm gonna go and update the item instead. And there are two different ways that we can approach this problem. And the first is with the filter array method. Let's go and have a look at what that looks like. So first things first, let's just have a quick look at the SharePoint list that I'm going to be using for this example. Now this is my list, which is called daily log. It has a title and in that title field, I'm going to be putting days of the week. And I also have a, another field, a number field called number of times it happened. Now, what I would be expecting is within my flow that if I was to put Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday in there, then my entries would appear. Um, or if I was to put Monday in, then something else would happen. If I then have a look at my flow, I've already partially started this, so I've created myself a manual trigger. And as part of that manual trigger, I request what the day of the week is and also the number of times that it's happened. And I also have a create item, which is putting that information into my daily log list. But obviously I only want to create an item if it doesn't already exist in my list. Now to do this, the first thing I need to do is have a look at what's already in the list. And I'm going to be using the get items action from the SharePoint connector for this. So I've selected my site and I'm just going to go ahead and select my daily log list. And because this is the filter array option, the next thing I'm going to do is go and insert the filter array data operation action here. Now the output that I always get from get items is I get an array uh, and that array contains all of the items that match whatever the criteria is. Now because I've not specified anything, I'm just gonna get all the items that I've got within my list. So I'm gonna filter that list and one of the outputs that I've got from my list is I have a value and that value is basic, basically an array of values. So I'm gonna select value I'm then going to say, okay, so what is the field that I need to um, that I need to filter on? And that is going to be the title field because that's what contains my days. And I'm going to say where the day is equal to. Let's go and get the day of week from my trigger. So where the day in the title field is equal to the day of the week that's provided through my manual trigger here. Now that I'm doing that comparison, I need to add a condition. And if you think back to the logic that we had on the screen, it's all about if the item doesn't exist, then we're gonna go and create it. Now for me to determine whether that exists or not, I need to use an expression. And that expression is called length. And that is basically going to help me to evaluate whether my array has got content in it or if it's empty. So what I'm going to do is determine from the length, I'm going to come back to my filter array and I'm going to determine the length of the body. And we'll see what this looks like in a moment. Now, if my body is equal to zero, that means that nothing has been returned from the get items and therefore nothing has been returned uh, through, or nothing has been returned through the filter then it means that it doesn't exist in the list so i can go and create it so let's drop my create item into the into the yes route so let's go and quickly do a couple of tests 
Let's go and save and test it. And I'm going to go for Wednesday. And let's get the five in there. So because Wednesday doesn't already exist in my list, I'm expecting it to be created. So let's just expand those out. So in my get items, I've got values coming back because I knew there was already an entry in the list. When I filter my array, I filtered on whether the title equals the, uh, the day of week input. So did the title equal Wednesday? Because nothing was found, the output therefore is a, an empty array. So when I looked at my condition and I said I want to test the length of the array, uh, and where the length of the array is zero, that's evaluated to true, which means that my item is being created. And if I look at my list, I can now see Wednesdays in my list. If I go and run this again, let's just check the negative root for that. So I'm gonna perform the action again. This time I'm gonna put, uh, put Wednesday again, and I'm gonna put the number of times as 10, and I'm gonna run it. Now this time, again, just to go through that same process, once again, I've got entries in my list, so I know that my filter array is going to be filtering something. It's going to look at where the, uh, the array was equal to Wednesday, but this time you can see that it's actually retrieved information in the body. So when my condition fires, this time it's gone down the no route, it's ignored the create item. So again, if I just look at my list, nothing has happened. So I would then use my update item instead on this route to, the, uh, to change the, uh, the value from five to 10. So that is the filter array method. As you can see, it's quite simple, it's quite graphical, which means that for somebody who's maybe a beginner to using Flow, you can use uh, the step-by-step -step process to go through and see exactly what's happening. So you get your items, you then filter uh, you then filter your array, which you get from get items, then you can do your condition and then do whatever actions you want from there. So it's graphically represented every step of the way. For me, I'm not a fan of doing it that way, purely because I don't like how inefficient get items is in this scenario, because we're getting all the information and then we're pro, uh, filtering down that, uh, those list items within Flow itself. When we look at part two, then we will look at how we can use the filter queries and then the expressions to be able to do that in a slightly more efficient way. Being slightly more efficient, but it also means it's slightly more advanced because it's not as graphical. So we'll look forward to that in part two, which will follow very shortly. But if you've got any questions in the meantime on that video, please do feel free to reach out on Twitter at mattweston365. Feel free to connect to me on LinkedIn at the same handle and I'll be happy to answer any questions. I hope that was useful to you to start off with. We'll finish it off soon, and I look forward to seeing you then.